yeah, your yeah, name, hi. sorry, I'm David. Nice Bravo, I'm David. Hi, hi. Hi. So do you think you have, in order to achieve perfection, you have to seek God? Yes. You cannot find a perfection in the cultivation of yourself. I, I would say that no matter how much I cultivate myself, I'll always be imperfect in that ontologically, for example, I age and I die, right? I can never stop that. Uh, even if I, I create things that outlive me after I die, it'll ultimately still fade away. So no matter it's formulated while I'm alive, there'll always be a portion that will be also imperfect. To attain that, I hold that can only be done by God who is perfect. So you believe that when your soul ascends to heaven, it will achieve a state of perfection? If you die in Christ, yes. And on this, in this world, we can never reach perfection. Do you see perfection anywhere in the world? Um, I, I don't. don't. No, no. I don't either. No. So, so I would say, you're look, so to answer your question, yes. if we cannot find a certain thing in our reality, how can we then grasp it? Well, I, I, when, I, when I follow a path, I feel if, if God was really loved us, he would give us some sign when we are on the right path. Okay. And I have, I have, I am atheist. Okay. I, I sense a good action when I do one. Okay. And I don't need the wider moral structure of Christianity to guide me down that route. Okay. It would depend. What are you trying to achieve? So, I will admit, without Christianity, you could potentially be a Sikh, right? And you could always pursue justice, marry a woman, have many kids, and live out as a moral example in your community. I admit that. That's possible, right? However, I also believe in the transcendent nature of humanity. So, what are you doing for that aspect of yourself? That's, that's my primary problem. I mean, I, I would love to explore that idea of the transcendence of humanity because... Yeah. I mean, what did Shakespeare say of death? It's the undiscovered country from whose born no traveller returns. I didn't know that, but yeah, okay, I'll just take a look at that one. That, 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 <laughs> that wasn't my line. The, the, the undiscovered road, sorry, say The again. undiscovered country, country from whose born no traveller returns. From whose board? Who's born. So when you're born into death, oh, born. Okay. you never return. That's nice, It's okay. undiscovered. Useful life. Beautiful. It's almost like it came from God. But that's, that's, yes, I, I, well, I, I, I don't know if you're to talk to a Muslims, right? They'll claim that the Quran is like magnificent because like the Arabic is so eloquent or whatever. But I'm not going to I, 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 I yeah. haven't read enough of the Quran. To, okay. But it's should, it's not going to happen. But let me do, look yeah. up at the clouds. And how can you how can you know what holds us if there is a next life if there is not? So again, like I was telling the gentleman beforehand, right? I, I admit that this is a belief based, uh, um, or this is a, a, um, a belief based like truth that I'm, I'm hanging on to. But believing in things that are not well explained or that are not physical is not a wrong thing. Yes, that's true. Right? So I am simply also applying this belief. When I look up at the sky and the stars and the trees, I do wonder why doesn't it all just fall apart? I, I wonder that sometimes. Because, like, like, for example, with, with buildings, right? If the structure isn't great, it'll fall down. If it's not maintained over a decade, it'll fall down no matter how strong it is or how big it is. So what keeps it all in place? That's what, what I wonder. Well, I'm, I am aware that I'm an atheist because I live in an age which has an intellectual structure and it's, and it's scientific in its foundation. And I just, wait, that structure has helped explain different processes in nature. Oh, sorry. Once you finish your conversation, just Oh, um, I can. Do you mind? Sorry. Um, I didn't want to. Um, let me just. Do you want to record it or you just have like a regular conversation? I don't mind, thing? you know. Uh, let I, me just. I don't, we don't want to. Um, yep. Uh, not yet, not yet, not yet. Sorry. I'm, I'm, yeah. What up? No, I'm just moving because somehow we moved, moved that way. Yeah. Thank you, thank you. I, I, do, I don't want to obscure yeah. the table. It, yeah, so good. Someone's yeah, so. soul could be so, someone's soul could, 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 past. Someone's soul could be doomed to hell. So, yes, know, yes, sure, they, yeah. If only they had seen the Quran. If only they had seen the Quran, oh, man. What a shame. What a absolute shame. But, no, no I, again, I don't think that necessarily that you are wrong. I would simply say that what you hold is true is incomplete. That's all. I think um, the problem with a lot of modern atheists, in my view, 
is that they focus too much on the material while believing fully in the immaterial, by the way, right? Like atheists will, will point to science and equations, which is completely immaterial, yeah. essentially, right? But they just want to deny the idea of a god because now that we have so much exposure to many different religions and we're not siloed in our like little villages only believing in like Hinduism or Christianity, now that we have all, like, access to all these religions, we can look and say, hey, wait a second. They believe in one god and their god is true, but so do they, so do they, so do they, so do they. They can't all be right. So it's either like, either, I don't know, they're all wrong or, or one of them is right, right? So I, I completely get, get that view. What I would say to counteract that is to, um, this is something that we're taught in Christianity. So Jesus tells us how to avoid, for example, false teachers and false prophets. And he says that you can do a litmus test. And that test is that by their fruits, by what they produce, what they do, what they say, you will know who they are. So I, I openly like, uh, encourage you, look at all the religions you want. Start with the ones you're more familiar with maybe, or go somewhere completely far away. And read into the text or the teachings and see if they truly make you a better person or convince you that the God they're following is the correct God. I hold that that is true in Christianity, and my evidence for that is the person of Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. But somebody else, like a Muslim, might hold that th their belief is true, and the evidence is Muhammad. Yes. But I would question, look at the character of a Muhammad, or of a Genghis Khan, or whoever, and the character of Jesus. And tell me which of those two would you say is incorrigible? I, 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 t I think the moral doctrines that Jesus espoused are very attractive. And I'm not a Christian, but I think that is largely a good way to conduct yourself and live your life. So, not 100%. Not 100%. There's some stuff. This is the issue yep. I really have with the book. You, you, you go through it and there, is actually, there are actually contradictions within the text itself. Okay. And that troubles me greatly because God, it's said that we are made in the image of God. Yes. Meaning, I, I think that means that we are given the power of reason. Yes. And that faculty is pure and accurate. Okay. And when it stumbles across a contradiction, that means that that thing is wrong. It should, it should be, it should be uh, abandoned as a belief. So, and that is what you find in the in, in, in these texts. So it's just a very troubling situation for me. And if that could be resolved, I would seriously reconsider my position. Wh which contradiction in particular are you referring to? Well, for, I, I I think with with Christianity, it's a Trinity, which I have never really? understood. Yeah. Okay. Yes. The, so the idea that a being is both three separate things and yet one totality. Right eludes my my reason so we don't use the word okay so um okay you know what let's, let's just go back all the way to the beginning then so we don't use the term separate because uh se separate can be equated to a part right yeah. so in the way that you have like a pantheon of gods right like uh you know take odin take uh um like, like uh hella and uh, thor or take um I don't know, like any of the Mesopotamian gods or oh, Egyptian yeah. gods, right? Take any of those, right? All of those are separate existences, right? So that's why you have like a pantheon of like a, a head god and a wife god and, and like a child god. But we don't hold the idea that any of the three substances of God in the Trinity are separate, only distinct. So that's why, why we can refer to them as one. I see. That's a very good point, actually. So that, that, not, that is the mainline belief. They, they are distinct, not, not separate. That's all. So they're not. They're, what, what is the difference between distinct and separate? So distinct means distinguishable, right? So effectively, in in our belief, with the three substances of God, so the Father, Son, and Spirit, you can tell them apart. So they're distinguishable in that sense. But they are not separate because they all subsist of the existence of God. So they, they, they all, so this is the, the, the weird thing about the Trinity that, that doesn't make sense for what we have in our, in our reality. I, when I was a kid, I thought about it like a triangle. A triangle has three sides, but it's one shape. Here's the trippy thing about Trinity, however. All of the sides of the triangle are equal to the triangle. So the Son is equal to the whole of God, as is the Spirit and the Father. And there is nothing in our reality that is like this. That, that is 
Thank you. You explain it very well. No worries. Cheers. That's it. You're going to win. Well, this is yeah. You've done you've, 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 Okay. What? Well, 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 now you're going to say the shahada. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, um, it's David. Uh, yeah. This is my last chance to become a Christian. I, I mean, look, dude. Like, honestly, like. It's it's your journey, man. But, yeah. yeah, it's, it's your very, journey. I I do I, see, I don't. Part of me do, doesn't like attempting to wrestle the faith of other people. Oh, we're right away, man. Right, it's long I, I know, but I, I, I am in the I, right I'm, place. I'm, I'm the right guy for that. Yeah. To, if I wanted to do that. Go, so go ahead. Go ahead. Right go I ahead. Mean, I mean, seriously though. I mean, you, you, I understand the difference between distinctness and being separate. And separation. Yeah. However, yep. there is still. One, it, it, see what you're already saying. It's like it's like the the various body parts. They all belong to the same body. But so they would so they wouldn't be parts be, yeah, because of that other idea that, that that each of the substances equals the whole of God. So for example, you have lungs, heart, and the liver, but your lungs, heart, and liver are not equal to the whole of you, but they are in the Trinity. The thing is, that God is not composed of parts. Yeah. He's composed of ideas because these are concepts which can be, can, which can exist independently of one another. Right. Okay. So that's like a question of identity, right? So we don't, again, we don't have that problem within the Trinity because we hold that identity is not a property of, um, oh, sorry, um, uh, intellect yeah. is not a property of identity, but it's a property of nature. So all, when I said all three substances are equal to the whole of God, all three substances, the Father, Son, and the Spirit, all hold the, uh, the nature of God, and therefore the, the intellect of God as well. You look surprisingly sober. I can't do, man. You look, you look, you look, you look, you look, oh, boy. You say sober. <laughs> yeah, very well. But it's talking about oh, the Trinity. This man's a trained philosopher. You're I, I am not. I, well, I am not. You're better than most I, I, of I can just take an idea and try to explain it in a way that I would understand, and hopefully you have the same level of comprehension that I do. <laughs> I, th thank you. I'm going to... Inshallah. Yeah, inshallah, inshallah. In, 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 inshallah. In Jesus' name. <laughs> okay. We're, we're, this is a more Christian section of speakers. Oh my God, someone's got the cross. Yeah. Exactly. Wow. Yeah. Did you see the devil go, go, worship? Go there was a Satanist oh, yeah, 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 yeah. wandering around. Is he still here? He's actually a Muslim, but his point is that people oh, are driven by look, anger look, and look, fury. Little, little guy. Yes. About, ah, they're, I know. They're driven by anger and fury. And actually, in trying to assert their uh, religious position, they actually are doing Satan's work because they are clouded by fury. That was what he said. Interesting take on Speaker's Corner. It, it was. Oh, so David, how you doing? Alexi. Alexi. Alexi has trouble. Okay, cool. But, I mean, dude, that, that's an interesting position, right? I wouldn't necessarily agree with that, and I'd like to sort of talk more with him about it and understand what the idea is. So, so, yeah? you, don't, so you don't think the Trinity is conceptual? You think, sorry, you think it's conceptual. You think that it can be divided into the concepts. It can be separated into the concepts. Uh, I, I, I don't actually, no, I don't. Uh, so that, that would be the idea of divine simplicity. I don't believe that there's any part of separation in the Trinity. I simply believe that if you're looking for a one-to-one, -one, like for example, um, the idea that we have for God's knowledge, right, is a perfect one where experiences can be untrue. Right? Yes. You can feel happy because you take a drug, but then suddenly it wears off and you feel sad. Right? I know that feeling. I've got that sensation today. I, oh my goodness. Well, I, I, know, I know that feeling through extreme tiredness. Like there was a point in time when I used to work like two different jobs and I would have like five hours sleep a day for like three days in a row. And I feel completely like out of it. Even at one point, I was seeing little shadows in the corner of my eye. My God, right? I right? hope the shadows left. The shadows, man. They're still here. The they're, they're, oh, well. I can see them right now. I'm just ignoring them. Well, hopefully they wear away. There'd be so, some beasts lurking in the shadows. The shadow right. if, if it carries on, seek deliverance. That's, that's what I'd say. <laughs> but ultimately, when we talk about God's knowledge. Yes. Um, so we hold that, for example, God can possess the understanding. There was, uh, see that? God can possess the understanding of things that have form, like you and me in the universe, without actually uh, 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 obtaining the form of that thing itself. So yes. God's understanding is actually God knowing himself. Yes. So because God knows himself, and he knows everything about, about creation, because creation, we hold, is an external um, um, procession of God. 
So because God has self-knowledge, and he knows everything about creation, including the past, present, right. and future. So, he, so, not, so let, let's move on to another one of his... Did that make sense, by any chance? Yes, okay. All right. that, that's a very, that was a very good description. As long as it does, yeah. Oh, I mean, so he's aware that people are ignorant. Sure. But he doesn't... You need to possess the, the, the form of ignorance uh, uh, itself, basically. So, yeah. but isn't it like possessing an object? You're not that subject, you just see it. You yep. just see it. No worries, no worries, all good, all good. All good, thank you. No, you never stand in my way, you're all good. We're, we're fine. Yeah, I'll come back in No worries, no worries, we're good. Well, I said that I was going to look after these cameras. No worries, man, no worries, no worries. I'll look after them. I'll look after them, man. Can you look at, just make sure, just stand No one's going to break them, it's all good. Yeah, thank you, thank you. And if they do, then we'll fight. No, okay. <laughs> no, 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 it's all good, it's all good, don't worry. Cool, man, thank you. Sorry, Gary. No, no, so, so he, he, do, he doesn't experience, God does not experience the sensation of ignorance. The, the human sensation, no. He, he only doesn't. observes it. If you want to put it that way, sure. Right. But in my mind, yep. he lacks some kind of knowledge, the experience of not knowing something. So Does we hold... Jesus have that experience? Uh, yes, he, he did, for, for example, right? So Jesus has experiential knowledge of, of certain things, right? But we don't hold that as being anything that has been added to God. Okay. It's simply a consequence of, so with the, with the idea of the incarnation, right? So the idea of the eternal word of God. So one of the three uh, substances of God taking onto himself a human nature. We don't hold that a change occurred in God when that took place. Simply a change occurred in his creation. Right. Yes. So God didn't attain any new knowledge when he was here as Christ. All that simply happened was Christ didn't exist, then existed. So that, that's where the change comes in. And, right, right. And, and if, okay, right. And, and, ha, and is Christ the Son in the Trinity? Yes, yes. So and these are only just descriptions. And, 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 yeah. if, and if the Trinity is purely equal, yep. then how, why did Christ only arrive briefly on this earth and then disappear back into right. ether? Or has the sun always yeah. existed? No, uh, so so the, never, the, the sun is eternal, absolutely. But the incarnation, so the... Oh, thank you, thank you. <laughs> thank you. The, the incarnation uh, in the human person of Christ hasn't always existed. That, that, that is a, a temporal construct, right? But now, uh, theologically, we hold now that um, in, in the death and resurrection, that uh, Christ has now attained perfection uh, the same perfection that we will also attain when we died and are resurrected. Huh? He's a glorified human now, so sort of like a like a a, a, so a spirit soul legs. hybrid. Huh? So has arms and legs. So uh, not yeah. a sphere. Uh, no, 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 not quite a sphere. Uh, but no, he 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 appeared to no. He appeared uh, to. Heresy, that sorry. That he, that he was erected as a sphere. Which one is that? I've heard that one before. I, I'm yep. just gonna, I'm gonna find my friend. Okay, so, a, sorry. Uh, that's a pleasure speaking with you. Next time we can touch on something else if you yes, want. Yes, no, no, okay? it's very interesting. All right. It's cool. good to actually thrash some of these, you know, deeper points out I, to a mind. I agree, what because what, what we have more often, unfortunately, is for lack of a better term, right? With the Muslims. Okay, well, 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 there's, there's that, and then there's with the Muslims, it's like, oh, was Jesus God? How could God die? Like, like it's, it's not like, it's not really stimulating, like intellectually, but. Thank you. Yeah. I, will, I will return. Uh, Shrubble, see things. you later, man. See you later. David. 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 Take it easy, Shrubble. Let's take it easy. Howdy, everybody. So, I was talking, well, I was observing Mansour doing his best. Um, uh, yeah, in, interpretation, no, 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 this is even better. Okay, he was right. doing his best try okay. to understand the Christian examples for the existence of God. Oh, so right. he was given an atheist, the cosmological argument, the argument of like fine-tuning, the argument from design, right? Okay. Well, the problem was, he wasn't engaging with the atheist. He wasn't giving them an opportunity to understand his point. He was simply just lecturing them. He would talk for three to five minutes at a time, and then interject the atheist when he wanted to say anything for about 10 seconds, right? So ultimately, he's not really teaching him anything, just lecturing him. And that's not really going to help him convert to Islam. So, good old Mansour. Anywho, there was a Sikh, uh, well, a, a non-religious Sikh, who, who was there then with us. And so he held the view that um, Hitchens is the guy, Hitchens is his god. And because Hitchens has an issue with religion, therefore he does too. He grew up in the UK, he went to Catholic school, he did prayers in school, but ultimately realized when he was about 12 years old, yeah. that ultimately there's so many religions 
making so many claims that cannot be proved empirically. Therefore, they're all wrong. And what's correct? Science is correct. Um, atheism is correct. The Big Bang is correct. And dinosaurs are correct. Therefore, God is wrong. I simply told him that even if you do want to be highly um, empirical and, and highly intellectual about the idea, the idea that the universe is stable enough to allow dinosaurs to exist, to allow single cell organisms to become more complex life forms, and to allow a Big Bang to even happen in the first place, is for me proof of God. Because why must the universe stay stable? Why can't it just be chaos? The sun's here one day, then replaced by a black hole, and the next day there's a new sun. Why doesn't this happen all the time? Like, why isn't the, the universe truly random in the way it behaves? No, it seems well structured. And I'm simply saying that the structure is God. Totally agree. That's, that's, that's what I'm saying. And then ultimately, he left um, somewhat okay ish. Well, I gave him the gospel before he left at least, so that, that's fine. And then I talked to another guy, an atheist called Strabo. And he just wanted to like ask me about what it means to be a good person. Can we attain goodness without without God? In a certain sense, yes. But in terms of a sense of perfection, no. We can't become perfect in this earth ever because there is no perfection on earth. However, through Christ, we can. And then he asked me about the Trinity, and then we talked about that a little bit more. And I think he's more clear now on the understanding. So, for example, I noticed that when we talk about the Trinity, sometimes we can use improper wording that leads to wrong ideas. So the three persons are not parts, they are all the one God. The three persons are not separate, they are not apart from each other. It's not like, like, like Zeus, Hera and Hercules. Right. They are distinct, distinguishable in their roles. You can tell the father is the father based upon his role as the uncaused cause. You can tell the son is the son based upon his role as the begotten of the father. And the Spirit of the Spirit based upon, again, His role as spirating from the Father, all the Father and the Son, don't fight me. So, <laughs> okay, sorry. That then showcases to us, right, that the Trinity is not illogical. Right. We can explain this, but the, part, the unfortunate part is there is nothing in our reality that is like the Trinity. So we can use examples and analogies to understand an aspect of a Trinity or to make a model of a Trinity, but nothing in our reality is like the Trinity. Because what we believe in the Trinity is, for example, you have a triangle. A triangle has three sides. But we are saying in the Trinity that the three supposed sides of a triangle are equal to the whole of a triangle. And that isn't how we understand triangles to be. Triangles are composed of parts, but there are no parts in God. So ultimately in the Trinity, what you have is three persons, three substances of the one God that are distinct but not separate from one another. That is it. Simple. Anyway, God bless you guys. Let me go bust some dower. It's a two bust.